one of the ways in which I've changed since starting college is that I've definitely become more outgoing and I've been able to embrace my personality and all the different little things that shape me and make me who I am. It's important to stand out, you know, and to catch everyone's attention and ensure that everybody respects you for who you are. Step Up always taught me about the importance of being original and breaking society's mold, especially as a young Latina. I've been able to break so many boundaries, being the first in my family to go to college and being, you know, a woman in college. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at Step Up Together. Today we're talking about amplifying the Latinx experience with Marissa Solis. My name is Valeria. I'm a proud Latina activist and alumna of Step Up, the nonprofit mentorship organization behind today's summit. Step Up is all about helping teen girls inspire change, change for themselves and for their community. And it's part of the reason why the topic is so important to me. Before we get into the conversation, we have a very special award to present. Each summer, Step Up presents its Inspiration Award to a woman who inspires other women and girls to fulfill their potential. While we could not gather in person this year to honor a 2020 recipient, we did still want to honor her and present her with our award virtually. To help me present the 2020 Inspiration Award, I'd love to have Cesar Conde, Chairman of NBC Universal News Group, help us learn a little bit more about our honoree. Hi, I'm Cesar Conde, Chairman of the NBC Universal News Group. Uh, it's my absolute honor to be here with all of you today to honor my friend Marissa Solis, who is receiving the 2020 Mentorship Champions Award. Uh, Marissa is an innovator and a leader uh, with over 20 years of experience uh, leading marketing, sales, and communications organizations here in the U.S. and throughout Latin American markets. But not only that, she's been an incredible uh, advocate for young people coming through the ranks behind her. Uh, she has opened doors for so many throughout the years, and I've been able to witness it firsthand thanks to my work uh, with her at PepsiCo. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Marissa on this incredibly well-deserved honor. Uh, she is someone that we admire not only as a professional, but more importantly for the incredible work that she is doing to help build and help uh, grow the next generation of women uh, throughout the professional arena here in the United States as well as throughout Latin American markets. Thank you, Step Up for recognizing this incredible true trailblazer uh, in Marissa Solis. Marissa, congratulations on this incredibly well-deserved honor. Thank you for all that you continue to do to inspire women and girls throughout the country. Congratulations, felicidades. Thank you, Cesar. Muchisimas gracias for those just kind words and for the acknowledgement. It really means a lot coming from you. Uh, I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. And you know, it's it's really, awesome and I'm humbled to receive this award, but more importantly, I'm excited to be here uh, to talk about the future generation uh, and really the change and the impact we can make. So I'm excited to be here with Valeria and get a chance to have a great conversation about her future and future impact of Latinos. Hi, Valeria. Hi, I'm Marissa. It's so, it's so good to see you. And yeah, definitely resonate with the next generation. Uh, your journey and perspective is inspiring to anyone, but yeah, it's especially, I'm especially moved as a young Latina activist on a mission to empower the next generation. So I have a list of questions I'd love to ask you, and I wrote these myself. I would awesome. love to know, was there ever a time when you felt overlooked because of your background? And if so, how did you overcome such a challenge? Yeah, I will tell you, um, I feel overlooked all the time. I mean, even to this day, um, there's always somebody that overlooks you or ignores you because of, you know, your background, where you may come from. Even early on, because I was an immigrant coming to this country, um, you know, being a woman, being a Latina, uh, the social status that my family had, like all of those things just caused people to overlook me. And I think, um, you know, over the years, that's what that fueled my resolve uh, and made me strong. I don't like to be underestimated. So, you know, I, as, as I've shaped my own kind of internal voice, I've built that courage to just shine my light, be who I am, no matter what people say. Um, and even as to this day, if somebody overlooks me or underestimates me, 
you know, I think they're, they're sorry afterwards, right? Because I just come back strong um, because I want to prove them wrong. That's so great. Yeah. Raise to make your voice louder. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, I can definitely like really, I think I was fortunate enough to have like a mother. Or I was raised more heavily by my mother and she, yeah, she's this very like, she has this very powerful presence and I feel like I was able to get influenced by that and bring it on to like all those different spaces or maybe I didn't feel as big, but yeah, yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> That's great. Moving on. Was there ever a time where you doubted your own expertise and qualifications to do a certain job? Hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, very similar. I think always, right? You always, uh, it's, it's a natural tendency to be afraid when you face something new, um, when there's a new opportunity. Um, you're afraid because either you've not tried it before or you feel uncomfortable. Um, but I would tell you, I think the key is to always um, take that step anyway. Um, do it while you're afraid and embrace that fear because that fear kind of gives you that energy and, the, and that strength. And over time, you learn to nurture. You know, I was talking about that inner voice. It's so important because that voice inside often it's negative. I don't know why, right? You're born with it and it's like, no, you can't do this. Oh, I don't know about that. It kind of gives that doubt. Um, but I think over time, if you learn to nurture it and make that voice your champion and make that voice kind of your warrior, um, then it's great. Because every time I doubt myself, even to this day, it's my inner voice that's saying, no, come on, you can do this. It's okay to be afraid and okay to be uncomfortable. Just go for it, right? And lean in. And I think that's what's helped me over time, just overcome that fear. It's there. I'm still afraid today, you know, every day when new things come up, but, uh, but I've learned to, to just overcome it and, and do, do it anyway. Yeah, I think that's, you know, so true. There's, you can only ever get accustomed to it and strive for a better understanding until you actually yeah, dive into that uh, fear. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to change it into like a positive inner voice. Yeah. Um, moving on, and this is related to the communities yeah, that we're part of, having read about the responsibility that you feel towards representing underserved communities, was there ever a time that you felt you may have been taking on too much with everything you do all together? And how did you gain the confidence to keep going? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. You know, I, unlike the other questions, I never felt that. Um, I always have had, you know, the energy and motivation to serve. I think it's, it's something that that's just innate within me. Um, but, but I will be, you know, I, I don't think it was until this year, frankly. Um, and it was right around the time George Floyd was killed and, you know, all of the unrest and everything that happened in our country post that, um, there was just so much pain in the country. And, and I really felt it. I mourned it. Um, and I, I felt tired. It, I think it was the first time ever in my life that I did feel overwhelmed and tired um, of the fight, you know. But um, as I reflected, and I had a lot of great conversations with, you know, a lot of people, people in my community, my family, a lot of my Black brothers and sisters. And um, it was great just having those conversations, knowing there's a community around you. And they helped me and, you know, it's kind of like recharging your batteries, right? They helped me recharge and reflect and, and gave me a reason to just keep fighting because now more than ever, you know, we need people to be involved, to give back to communities, to unite our communities. So I'd say never I was, had I felt overwhelmed until this year and I've learned a lot and, you know, I'm ready to fight again, but, uh, it was, a, it was a good moment of reflection for me. Mm. Yeah, I think it's totally fair to have days where you either just like let your blood boil or where you just need to like kind of absorb, yeah, all that pain. But I'm so glad that you were able to find strength in your community again, you know, to keep pushing on. Yeah. Mm. With that, uh, you volunteer your time as a board member for nonprofits, helping black and brown communities in Dallas. Why is that important to you? Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really important to me because that was me, you know, um, mm -hmm. growing up uh, in South Texas, you know, like I said, uh, highly Hispanic community, very low income, 
we, we didn't have the means, right? I, I didn't have the means to even think about going to college because my, my family just didn't have the money. Um, there were very little role models around me. And so people that reached out to me back then that helped me, um, they're the reason why I'm here. Um, and they're the reason I've accomplished all of these things. And that's why it's so important to me because I was that person. And so as I've had success in my life, it's only natural that I give back right? And make sure that every child out there that has a dream, every child out there that, you know, magic, that that magic sees the world, that that child can, can fulfill that dream. Um, and it's so easy. All it takes is someone believing in you, right? For you to, to really believe in yourself. So I volunteer so much of my time because it's, it was, it was done to me. So I need to do it for others as well. It kind of uh, reminds me of this quote, um, be who you needed when you were younger. And I feel like that's exactly, yeah, the type of path that you've yeah, followed. And yeah, absolutely right. It, that exposure, that um, care from someone just believing in you makes a world of a difference. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And it's so important, you know, as you take your next step that, you know, you're thinking about that because you will fulfill your dreams and you will have an amazing life and you have to give back mm -hmm. to somebody else to also fulfill their dreams and have an amazing life, right? It, it just, you keep paying it forward. Um, and I think that's just the beauty of the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, um, I was talking with uh, uh, the up staff and I asked at one point like, oh, is there going to be an opportunity for me to eventually become a mentor? Because I'd always been like this mentee. And I think it's just so exciting because um, I'd always been in the position where I had these mentors and I'm really excited to, after all this experience and all the wisdom that I've gained from all the people that I've met that I can, you know, share that, you know, now and in the future, you know, always. Yeah. Absolutely. I bet there's many people already looking at you now as a mentor and as a role model. Uh, so you have to remember that, right? I mean, accomplishing what you just have and now you're going to college. And you know you have you have this great opportunity in front of you, but everything you've already accomplished is somebody's you know dream, and so you have to remember they're already looking at you, Valeria. No pressure or anything, but uh, you know you're you're already a role model. Thank you. Yeah. And as we mentioned, mentors. Uh, moving on to the next question, who would you name as some of the most Im most impactful mentors in your life, and why were they so important to your growth? Wow. I've had so many, um, you know, throughout my life, I've, I've been extremely blessed in that regard, but, um, I'll give you four that have, I think really changed for me, the trajectory of, of, you know, at very important moments in my life. The first was my grandmother. Um, she was a very strong, very strong woman. Um, when I was very young, I lost my father. I was six years old um, and you know, my mom was very young as well. And it was my grandmother that took us under her wing and you know, just really nurtured my mom during that time and just showed us her strength. And she's always kind of been my true north um, and somebody I've always admired and somebody that very early on guided me. Um, you know, secondly, I think I mentioned, um, you know, early on in high school when I didn't have even anyone to tell me that college was a possibility. I had a teacher um, that took 10 of us on a trip to the East Coast to see, you know, Ivy League schools. Um, and we went to New York and we went to Boston and, you know, it was fantastic. And we went to DC and that's where I fell in love with Georgetown University. And even though back then it was a dream, right? How could I ever come to a place like this, a university like this, afford to even, you know, even travel to DC. Um, but it, she planted that seed. And because of that, you know, I was able to get a scholarship there and attend that university. Mm -hmm. And if she had never taken us, I don't think I would have ever even thought that, that it was possible. So she was, she was great. And then I'll just, I'll just mention two quick others. Um, there's a gentleman named Al Carey. He was the president of PepsiCo North America. So very important gentleman in business. Um, and he very early on took me under his wing when I joined PepsiCo. And 
again, he, he believed in me um, when others didn't, right? When you, you were talking about people ignoring you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when people ignored me because of who I was or, or didn't think that I could be an executive, he saw that in me. Um, and I really appreciate that because if it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't be here. Um, and last but not least, I have to say Caesar, um, who graciously did the remarks. I mean, he is a very important man in the industry. Um, and again, he took the time to mentor and guide me, you know, at a time I was coming into the industry and trying to learn and make my way and, and, and make relationships. And he really paved that path for me and has always been there, um, you know, to really guide me in my professional life. Um, and I really, really appreciate him for that. So just different, you know, along the way, different mentors. And there's been so many in between. But those four, I think, have made a big difference um, in where I am today. And I just wanted to acknowledge them. So thank you for asking the question. Yeah, and just you mentioning your grandmother. Again, it reminds me yeah, of my mom, too, just in that same way. Like, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to have grown up with such... Uh, yeah, such a strong and yeah influence, um, and I think it's really great that you also had mentors that recognize, you know, how innately like powerful and capable you were, and I feel like we all need that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, always, uh, you know, honor the sacrifice your parents make um, to be where you are, and if you do that throughout your life, you know, it keeps you grounded and and humble because. You'll, you'll be a big star, you know, you'll, you'll make it to big places in life. Um, but you always have to remember where you, where you come from, because that's, that's what keeps you grounded and humble and, and your heart full, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the work, the whole future is like defined by where, yeah, where we start. And I feel like that, at least that's the case. Yeah. For us. Yes. All right. So with that, we have time for um, one more question. What are some words of advice that you feel may be helpful to some young Latina? Oh, actually, sorry. One question before that. Um, okay. What are the most important lessons you would want your daughter, you know, as a mother, to take from the intentions you have and the work that you do? Yeah, that this one is a, wow, it's such a question because I think about it every day. You know, I have a 15 year old, she's a sophomore in high school and every day I think about what lessons I can give her and you know I always tell her first and foremost um, be your whole self be who you are always let your light shine no matter what um, let us see your magic even and especially in the darkest of circumstances or if you're afraid even then let us see your magic I always um, and I tell her to be kind you know the, the world sometimes is is not is not a good place most of the time it's a good place um sometimes it's not and so i tell her be kind and, and be a force of good you know to bring people together um and the last thing i tell her is you know don't be afraid to seek help because there's so many people out there that are so willing to help you and you know and and just give give a hand to to making you a great person and so don't be afraid to ask for help and that's what I tell her and you know hopefully she's taking the advice um, and you know we'll see we'll see what happens in her future but uh, it's definitely something I think about every day for sure. Yeah well I feel like the, you just nailed it with like those main yeah points she's definitely lucky to have someone like you you know be be true to yourself make sure to be compassionate to like a world like this and yeah make sure to always be willing to also like accept that help and ask for it because yeah, we can't just, we're, yeah, we're not invincible and yeah, we all need that support. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure she is already developing you know, so she's thriving under, under your care and love. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the actual last question this time, <laughs> um, what are some words of advice that you feel may be helpful to some young Latina girls who may not have any positive role models around them? Um, you know, a lot of what I just said about my daughter, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing is, you know, it is about being yourself and shining your light. That's not always easy when you have no one around you. Um, so I'd say the first thing is you've got to learn to very early on cultivate that inner voice. You are your biggest champion. Um, 
And so learn to, you know, have that warrior inside you that says you can do this. Uh, you know, you can conquer the fear, you can conquer, you know, the nerves and you can, and you are, um, amazing. So that inner voice is so important. Um, and I would say, you know, build that and then don't ever forget just that, that magic and that light, right? You gotta, you gotta shine it. Sometimes, sometimes the places are very dark. Um, and you have to just remember, you have a very bright light that you got to shine. Um, and I think, you know, if you, if you strengthen your voice and if you shine your light and, and do things and lean in, even if you're afraid, right. Um, then I think everything will be fine. Um, and the last thing, and I, I said this to my daughter, but, um, make sure you pay it forward, right? We, we are in this world and we are so blessed to have people who reach out, who help, um, who push us up. Make sure you pay it forward. And when you are out there and you've made it in the world and you're living in a fabulous life, you've got to reach back out and pull others with you. Because mm -hmm. um, that's, that's ultimately the most rewarding thing. It's not all the success, right, that you've I mean, success is great, but the most rewarding thing um, is seeing others succeed because you helped them or you believed in them. Um, so I'll say that to you, Valeria. I'll be following you and see how you do. And it'll bring me tremendous joy as I see all the milestones, right? That you're about to, to go do as, as, as you get into your college years and then even beyond that. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel exactly the same way that, um, you know, I, I, if I were to answer like the same question too, just reminding them to like, you know, believe in themselves. Like, I guess we can't necessarily, we don't always have the privilege of having that support or mentorship. So a lot of times it's up to us to like, you know, develop that inner courage to just be, be us and feel capable and also take advantage of the opportunities that we have because you know it's clear that once you do gain that little bit of like exposure it just takes you so far and it definitely like widens your world and widens your imagination and just as important um the way you said like giving back i i completely resonate with that um every time like i've been low the thing that saved me was compassion it was um seeing people as you know human beings and seeing them as people that I could also help you know that's yeah I definitely say that's my main mission you know helping others and yeah and I'm <laughs> I'm so glad that uh yeah we can be part of that the same mission yeah thank you so with that <laughs> thank you for being with step up today we are inspired by the change your talent has created and we thank you for sharing with us uh, for our guests, today's session has been offered in support of Step Up, the nonprofit hosting today's summit. Step Up hopes to raise over half a million dollars today to fund mentorship programs that support girls and young women in becoming confident, college bound, career focused, and ready to join the next generation of women leaders. Please consider helping us reach this goal by visiting the donate icon on the Step Up Together website or app. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Valeria. You're amazing. Let me give myself a hand. Uh-huh, let me